Talking Avatar things are usually fun, and Annie Portrait is a new release which uses stable diffusion to create a whole range of talking heads. It's got an Apache license which is cool, and it will even run on Microsoft Windows too. It has three basic modes, self-driven, face reenactment, and audio-driven. In self-driven mode, you provide a single face image and a special face pose video. In face reenactment mode, you can use a normal video instead of the special face pose one. And in audio driven mode, like the name suggests, you can instead just provide an audio file along with your face image and it will make the video up for you. To start with, you'll need to download your copy of the code, which you can do with the git command. Once downloaded, change into your newly created directory and you'll be ready to start with all the Python things. We don't want to clash with any other Python apps, so create your new Python 3.11 environment and then activate it. All you need to do then is to install the requirements with pip install minus r requirements.txt. Assuming you don't already have FFmpeg installed, such as with sudo apt install FFmpeg, then you should do that too. You could, of course, also do it with conda install FFmpeg. If, for some reason, you're not using Linux with an NVIDIA card, you may need to check pytorch.org to get your PyTorch install command. I can't say for certain if AMD cards will work as I don't have one. I suspect not as they do say CUDA is a requirement, but who knows? The next thing you need to do is download the weights and there are quite a few of them, though you may have some already. To download the weights, you can use commands like the Hugging Face CLI, Git clone, or you can just download all of the models individually from the Hugging Face site. And don't forget that if you are a nerdling level Patreon or above, you do get supporting documentation. Also note that by default, the Hugging Face CLI command will download files to the cache directory specified by your Hugging Face home environment variable. But you can also specify a custom cache using the minus minus cache dir if you like. Very handy if you've got multiple drives, for example. Now there are quite a few things to download. As you can see, you've got their pre-trained weights, Stable Diffusion 1.5 of VAE and Image Encoder, and also something to do with audio there, WAV to VEC. They also show how everything should be organized there. They've got everything in the pre-trained weights directory, um, which isn't actually where any of their config files point. So I wouldn't use that. Instead, use the pre-trained model directory, which they do actually include. If we scroll all the way up there, it should be there already just with that little text file in there. But down here, rather than calling it pre-trained model, they call it pre-trained weights. So don't get too confused by that. They are the same directory, essentially. This is what they mean, pre-trained model. So in pre-trained model, that's where you've got the image encoder, your VAE, stable diffusion, WAF to VEC, and all of their model downloads as well. If you're a Windowser, there is a special fork just for you that's worth checking out. This one has a slightly modified Windows requirements.txt file just for you instead of the normal requirements.txt file. That one uses CUDA 11.8, which is what I showed earlier with those PyTorch releases. However, even us users of more standard operating systems may like to use their pull request as it does have one rather cool feature up its sleeve. What is that? Well, it allows you to use any of your existing Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoint or safe tensors models which you may already have. Pretty handy for me as those models are exactly the formats that I have already. If you've got mostly diffusers versions, you won't need to worry as you can simply specify the location in the config file, which we're going to have a look at later. But for now, let's assume you do want to add this pull request, in which case you can create a local version for testing. The pull request has a number 13, so we do a git fetch origin for that, and we're going to call it testing. Git checkout testing will change to your testing version there, and if you want to go back, you can do git checkout main. 
So with all those models downloaded, all the code installed and packages ready to go, you can get creating. It's easy to use your own images and stuff, but let's start with their examples to make sure everything works as it should before going wild with our own ideas. Under the inference section, you get all their documentation and the first command they provide is the self-driven option. However, the way they have it right now probably isn't the best one to run as your very first thing to do. Why? Well, that's simply because the example video used there is really long. It's 1,794 frames loading. That took an extra 25 gig of RAM for me and actually used 12 gig of VRAM, uh, along with an estimated time to completion of just over one hour. What I'd suggest instead is to add the minus L300 option on the end. So let's just copy and paste that now. We'll copy that, pop over to our terminal there, paste that in and the option you want to add is minus L and then a length. Now 300 was a lot better for me. That only used an extra six gig of RAM and 10 gig total VRAM. And the time there was a lot, lot shorter, only a few minutes. Given that the requirements are fairly beefy, I'd probably steer clear of trying to do a video much longer than 60 seconds in any one time, unless you've got the hardware for it. Once that command finishes, you should get a video in your output directory, and opening up that video should look something like that. Okay, so there you go. If you've got that sort of result, then your first test has passed. Now that video was generated using a pose video, which looks like the one on screen now. And if you're wondering how to generate those pose videos, that's what their second command there is for. There it is, the scripts video to pose. So you can just copy and paste that. And obviously for the pose video path there, you would put wherever your own video is. Might have seen the example at the beginning of this video. There it is, self-driven dot mp4 that one ran that command and then it gave me self-driven underscore kps the face reenactment version or video to video just uses a normal video once again however there is currently a slight issue in that the default config file will generate an error so if you open up that file in a text editor config prompts animation face reenactment there it is, let's crack that open. And the bit that's causing the problem is the video at the end there. If you do change that slightly to use that pose reference video instead, it will run through. Their third option there is audio driven mode, the audio to vid script. And that one just needs an audio file and actually worked first time for me without any errors or needing to change anything. Also note that this one too has a supplementary script and that one will generate a head pose control video from a driving video, but there is one there by default already, which you can just use. With all three of the scripts tested, you can now pick your favorite one for customization. I'm gonna go with the audio driven one, but the same principle applies for any of the config files. Like we did with the video to video config file, all you need to do is use a text editor to make any changes. It's best to make a copy and keep the original file for reference. So as you can see there, all my versions start with NR underscore. For the most part, you can ignore everything apart from the last two or three entries. The head pose control file from just a moment ago is one option you may wish to change, but for the most part, it'll be the last two lines there. As you can see, the very last line there is a wave file, so you could use something like Audacity to record your voice, and that's how you can generate a wave or use your favorite recording software. Remember to save your file somewhere and then put the path to it where the existing WAV file entry is at the moment. There we go, so I've changed it to a different sample. Their avatar images are mostly squarish, but it does show they don't have to be 512 by 512 exactly, as I first suspected they may have to be given those width and height options on the commands. So pick whatever image you fancy and like with the audio file, simply replace the reference image entry and save your brand new configuration file. Then when you run your command, don't forget to change that config option to include whatever your config file is. 
In this case, mine starts with NR underscore, because that's the one I changed. If you want to train your own model, they have a section for that too. However, as their training needed three days and they had four A100 GPUs, I haven't really dug into that myself, but at least the option's there if you do have the hardware. My favorite one is the self-driven version, but as you might have guessed already, any of these options are ideal to go along with something like RVC. You might have seen my videos on that already. Uh, and if you use that, then you can create something a little bit like this. Somebody take 